The sun is only just rising, but the water is already 30 degrees Celsius. Coral depends on warm temperatures in order to grow. And when it comes to coral reefs, they don't get any more spectacular than here in Kimba Bay in Papua New Guinea. They're an essential source of food for hundreds of species of fish. Some feed directly off the coral, while for others, it's a hunting ground. It's a highly complex ecosystem. Kimba Bay is an officially designated marine protected area. Fishing with troll nets or using dynamite or poison is strictly forbidden. Conservationists explain the dangers facing the reefs. Okay, they have an importance of why they're being found here. Now, if you look at the... Every Saturday, Lorna Romaso takes school groups to the beach, where the pupils collect the trash that has washed ashore. Who threw this bottle overboard? Where did this plastic bag come from? Estimates put the amount of trash that ends up in our oceans each year at over 50 million tons. Most of it degrades extremely slowly. Well, plastic bottles, they're actually probably 70, 50, 80 years to break down. Cigarette butts, people always take for granted cigarette butts, and they, after they have a cigarette, they throw it into the sea, 10 years. Okay, bottles, the SP bottle or any other type of bottle, a hundred years. Oil, it might never be able to break down. Lorna Romasa works for Mahonio Nadari, which appropriately enough means guardian of the sea. The organization also runs tours of the interior. The youngsters learn how large sections of the rainforest by Kimba Bay have been felled and replaced with gardens and palm oil plantations. This leads to erosion and can ultimately suffocate the coral. Okay, so it's, it's an extra knowledge Nick is giving you again. The reef needs sunlight and the water needs to be clear. So if, if, if there's been too much heavy rain and the rivers start bringing down all the sediments onto the reef, it ends up blocking out the sunlight for the coral polyps in order to get the sunlight to make their food, to photosynthesize. So if there's so much sediment, it blocks out the sunlight and then the corals, they stress out and eventually some of them will die. There is universal agreement among experts that we are still only scratching the surface when it comes to coral reef research. We know more about the moon than about the oceans that cover over two-thirds of our planet. For marine biologists, Kimba Bay is a veritable treasure trove. Amelia Wenger from James Cook University in Australia is investigating coral growth. The coral is an animal and it can feed just by taking particles out of the water, but it also has uh, another organism that lives in it um, called zooxanthellae, which is important. Um, it takes the energy from the sun. 75% of the world's known types of coral live in Kimba Bay. Gorgonias, for example, also known as sea fans. Sharing the habitat are sea anemone which provide food and shelter to clownfish. These reefs appear to be intact, and new ones emerge continuously. An estimated 900 different types of fish live here. And dolphins are an almost daily sight. Kimba Bay is part of the Coral Triangle, which spans the tropical waters of the Philippines, Indonesia, Malaysia, the Solomon Islands, and Papua New Guinea. The German government is investing 2.4 million euros to help preserve the reefs in Kimba Bay. Some of the money helped the U.S.-based organization, The Nature Conservancy, buy this boat so locals can monitor the coral. We are training the local people 
on doing the monitoring themselves. So they go out to their locally managed marine areas and they are using the boat to um, um, train on how they can monitor their mangroves, their coral reefs and their fish plus um, other invertebrates like sea cucumber. These are the things that they depend on for an income. Coastal residents have been involved in the project from the outset. The coral reefs are part of their habitat as well. And in Papua New Guinea, local communities are the marine resource owners. In the village of Patanga, certain reefs in need of recovery are off limits for fishermen. Since 2005, we have seen a, a significant uh, amount of change in the number of fish and also the coral has uh, regrown again, which is a good sign that uh, people in the community have uh, realized the importance of uh, conservation. Old legends also come in handy. The reefs, and as it happens, the protected ones, are said to have once accommodated mythical creatures. Ruben Tuka tells the story of the terrible moray eel that bites anyone who dares to enter her reef. Such stories will be remembered and passed on by the next generation. And in the interests of sustainability and diversity, they certainly do no harm.